trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. Oh, 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 oh. can't turn around. We come this far by faith. Come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord, trusting in His holy word, He never failed me yet. Oh, 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 oh. we come this far by faith. This far by faith, Lord, we're leaning. leaning on the Lord, Lord we're trusting. trusting in His holy word. Yes, he, never he never failed me yet. Oh, 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 can't turn around. Faith, mm, leaning, mm, trusting. He never failed me yet. Oh, 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 we come this far. We have come this far. Yes, we're leaning, mm, trusting. He never failed. turn around we come this far by faith we have indeed come this far by faith we have indeed been leaning and depending on the Lord if you love the Lord come on and give him a hand clap of praise It's never easy to say goodbye, but we have to, because when the Lord calls, we've got to answer. And I want to encourage the family today that it's okay to cry, so long as those tears, some of them, are tears of joy. Brother Yeoman has gone home. He's gone home to be with his Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. Gone home to be with his Lord. Yes. And so we are indeed praying with and praying for this family. Amen. 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 It's been a long journey. Yes. It's been some good days and some bad days. It's been some uphill climbs, and we've had some good times. But the Lord has called, and Brother Reuben has answered. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you, God, that in the midst of our trial, you are always right there. In the midst of our storm, God, you're always right there. We thank you, Father, because when, when we're down and out, you're always up. When we're, when we're uh, on our knees, God, you always hear us. And so, Lord, we come asking right now that you would look and have mercy. We come asking right now, Lord, that you would touch this family in their time of grief. That you would hold on to them right now, God. That you would give peace where peace is needed. 
were praying, God, that you would restore joy in the midst of their sorrow. We're praying, God, that you would wrap your healing arms around this family. We know you to be a balm in Gilead. And so, God, we're asking that you would wrap your healing arms around this family. Restoration, God. Restore their hope. Restore their joy. Give them hope once again. Give them peace in their hearts. Where there's discomfort, Lord, give them peace in their hearts and help them to know that you're standing by. In Jesus' name, we pray and we give thanks. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have a selection by the choir.
Amen. Amen. Our friends may forsake us. Sometimes our family will even forsake us. But if we hold on to God's unchanging hand, amen, I think we can make it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning, Old Testament scripture, will come from the 23rd number psalm. If you look there, you'll find these words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Our New Testament scripture reading will come from the book of John in chapter 14. It says, let not your hearts be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Amen. God's word for God's people. Amen. At this time, uh, Romeo Watson is going to come with a solo. He renamed me. <laughs> Mike Tech. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear Falling on my ear Word of God discloses And he walks with me
Thank you, Brother Watson. I think I did rename him. <laughs> Amen. But he does know all of our name. Amen? Amen? He knows everything that we're going through. Amen. When we woke up this morning, he knew all about it. When we laid down last night, he knew what was going on. I'm glad that God has us as the apple of his eye. At this time, we're going to have reflections, and first we're going to have Deacon Sam Joyner to come, followed by Louis Valdez, and then Reuben Yeoman III. To Reverend Burroughs, Reverend Jarnigan, family, and friends, First, let me take this minute out of my mouth. And please bear with me. I've been dealing with a cold for about a week, and I hope it let me get through these few minutes here to say a few words, kind words, about a man that I got to know not very long, but in the short period of time that we knew each other, we grew very fond of each other. I can remember it was just <clears throat> a few years before COVID when I met Brother Yeoman. He was sitting in his favorite location over in the corner, and as I came down the aisle, I observed the tie he had on. And I made the comment, that's a pretty sporty tie you got on. And he said, you too. <laughs> wow. And we used to comment about our dress just about every Sunday. And so after a while of communing and talking with each other, we made a, joke, a pattern with each other. I said, now you know you about my size, so if I go first, you can raid my closet. <laughs> if you go first, I can raid your closet. So he turned around and talked, turned to Ms. Juanita and said, you heard him? <laughs> so I'm letting you know, let him get whatever he want. <clears throat> and beholding to him, Several months ago, he called me over to the house. And as we were sitting there, he says, uh, Deke, I ain't got too long to be here. So I want you to go in there. And get I say, Reuben, I don't, I don't need that. You ain't going nowhere anyway. I say, the Lord ain't ready for you. And you ain't going nowhere until God says you ready. And so he just, oh, no, 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 man, just gone in there. I got so much stuff in there. And sure enough, he had closed up the <laughs> Yahoo. I think I looked at two closets full of men clothing. But he was a little bit healthier than I was. But I did go over a couple of weeks ago. Me and Martha went by this visit. And he said, I want you to go in there and pick out what you want. I thought I was going to find at least a nice sweater in there I could wear that he might have had when he was smaller. But his sweater swallowed me, so I did 
just to please him because he was not going to let me go out the house unless I took something. And so I had to, I grabbed one time and he said, man, that ain't enough. Get another one. <laughs> so I ended up getting three ties. I thought about wearing it in dedication today and I said, no, I would be out of uniform if I wore it in honor of him today. So I didn't. And then when I got the call from one of our church members that he had made his transition, I immediately called Sister Juanita. And I was asking her, what can I do for what? She said, can you give me my husband back? I said, that's one thing I can't give you, baby. But if I could, I would, because I know what you're going through. She said, but Deacon, he wouldn't eat it. We talked last night. He didn't even let me know he was going. I said, Sister Juanita, you know what Scripture says. No man knows the hour. He did not know that was going to be his last night in this house. I say, but be sure God promised to never leave you nor forsake you. So he's going to take care of you. And you don't have anything to worry about. And I say, plus, your whole First Baptist family is here for you. And the funniest thing about me and Reuben, when I really got to know him, I was surprised I didn't know him before because I knew, I know quite a few members of the family. Sharwin and Reuben Jr. was right here in this church. I never put them together as his family. And he said, why not? We got the same name. <laughs> I said, it just didn't, I just didn't put it together. And then two of his nieces over there are my classmates, the Lacings. And I just said, wow, it was quite a few in the family. I already know your family. So that just show you what small circle we live in when we don't know each other, reach out to each other. But to the family, I just say, be still and know that God is with you. Rest on, my brother. It's such a beautiful day that the Lord's given us today for my friend, Reuben Yeoman. I met Reuben 15 years ago when he moved next door to us. And uh, he's the brother-in-law to Robert Cooper. And me and Robert were good friends. And Robert was a walking scripture book. The man knew every verse in scripture. So we would all sit on the porch and we would talk. And unfortunately, Robert passed. Reuben's like, I done lost my best friend. I said, no, you're not. I'm here. <laughs> so he became my best friend. We've done many things together. He had the lovely wife, Juanita, Sugar Wooga Wooga, that he used to call her, which I chuckle about because I couldn't spell it. <laughs> you know and um, we would talk all the time he's a uh, wonderful husband a father a brother a hero and I call him a hero because he served for our country he's proud of it and I was proud to know him for doing it he um, was a big sports fan him and my wife, Tiffany, would watch many games together because she's a sports fan in my family. And what I admire about him most was his faith. He man believes in his faith. He believed in his church. He loved his church. He talks about it all the time. He loved the choir. We would bring him on the second Sunday for he could see and hear the men's choir. He loved it. 
His wife loves coming. A man believes in his tithing. That's inspiring. To meet a person like that these days, it's difficult to find a person with a good heart, a good soul, one who would give you anything off his back. If you needed it, he was there for you. I'm just honored to know him. All I could tell you, I'm grateful that he's walking with the Lord today, that he is no longer in pain. I love him. My family loves him. I love Juanita. Juanita, know that your husband is happy. Amen. Know that he's no longer in pain. Amen. Know we will all see him again one day. Amen. This is our faith. This is what we believe in. And I just want to say it's a pleasure meeting every one of y'all here today. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Reverend Jarnigan, Reverend nice. Burroughs. Guys, thank y'all for coming out to say goodbye for, to my dad. Um, if everybody here, if you know daddy, he loved the church, he loved the Lord, he loved his family, and loved to tell stories. <laughs> if you spent any time around daddy, if you don't heard some stories, he would do anything to help anyone and daddy loved to work, and he put that in all his kids. He loved football. He put that in us too. He taught me to be the man that I am. He taught me to love my family, protect my family, and put them first, always, Amen. always. I'm gonna miss him. I miss the time I spent with him. I'm going to miss his stories that I've heard over <laughs> and over and over. But I love him. I love what he brought to me, what he taught me. And this was carried me through life. He did what a man was supposed to do. He raised his family. He cared for his family. He loved his family. And he made sure that you move forward. If you need him, you call him. In his later years, if he needed you, he called him. He's going to call you. And he has a lot of people that are going to miss him, miss the talk, miss his cooking. And he had a complete language that was his unique language. Dad had words and phrases. You had to know him to understand it. But I thank him. I thank you guys for just showing all this love to him. I'm going to miss him. Rest in peace, Pop. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning to Pastor Burroughs, to Pastor Jernigan, to the family of Mr. Yeoman, and to the members and friends of First Baptist Church of College Hill. These are the resolutions. We are confident, I say, and willing rather be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5.8. This comes from the Florida House of Representative, Representative Diane Hurt, District 63. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. 
John 14 and 1, humbly submitted Reverend Dr. Florence Para, pastor, Reverend Sharon Moten, assistant pastor, by the, by the grace of God church. To everything there is a season and a time, to every purpose under heaven. Ecclesiastic 3 1. Preferably submitted, fantastic, unique, native red hatters, Alma Re, purifier, queen mother, Joanne W. Harris, secretary. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. This is humbly submitted on the 16th day of February, 2024. Dr. Stanley Evan Burroughs, senior pastor. Dr. Ernestine Glenn, president. This comes from the Jolly Seniors. Whereas, a, again, a human spirit has taken its flight at the call of the Heavenly Father, to the mansion prepared for him from the foundation of the earth by an all-wise and loving God. We pin this resolution to express our grief in the loss of Brother Reuben Yeoman, Jr. Whereas the First Baptist Church of College Hill family bow in humbly submission to the will of God with his devoted wife, Sister Juanita Yeoman, and family, know that they have lost a loyal member and the world has lost a noble character in the passing of Brother Yeoman. We rejoice that his belief in the promise of God in Psalm 73 and 24 is now fulfilled. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterwards receive me to glory. His daily life gave evidence to the fact that he believed God's word and followed his guidance, seeking his leadership in all that he said and did. He was upright and loving and kind in all his ways, sincere and genuine in all his doings. He has left behind a beautiful memorial and we pray that his family as well as young people may emulate his life as he tried to lead his family during his time on this earth in the way God would have. Whereas the First Baptist Church of College Hill hopes that these few inadequate lines may in some way comfort the bereaved family and we express our gratitude to God for having left this beautiful life among us for a time to blossom out and bless us with the sweetness and righteousness like the fragrance of a rose. Resolve that a copy of this resolution be given to the family with our sympathy and prayer that God may sustain them in so deep a loss and a reminder in their loss is heaven's gain and a copy be placed in the archives of this church. Humbly submitted, Sister Rebecca Clayton, Church Kirk, Dr. S. Evan Burroughs, Senior Pastor. Acknowledgement. The family of Reuben Yeoman, Jr. would like to thank everyone for all their kind thoughts, words of encouragement, sympathy, prayers, and all deeds of kindness shown to his family during this time of sadness. Special thanks for Pastor Evan Burroughs and the members of First Baptist Church of College Hill, the family. Praise God, everybody. Praise God, everybody. I can tell that 
Brother Yeoman was a true, true supporter of the male chorus because we haven't sang this song in like forever. Our dear brother Rodney Lacing used to lead it and he's gone on to glory. So we're going to try to sing this. It's going to be difficult. But it's, I can't even, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. church Lord I can even walk without you holding my hand the mountains are so high and the valleys are so wide down on my knees listen y'all I learned to stand Lord I can't even walk without you holding my hand listen got another verse here One day, I made Jesus my all, my all in all. And if I'm in trouble, on his name, his name I can call. Oh, if I don't trust him, well, y'all, I'd be less, I'd be less, less of a man. Y'all see, 
I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Oh, the mountains are so high and the valleys are too wide. Down on my knees, Lord, I learn, I learn, I learn to stand. But Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding, holding my hand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Thank you, God. Nobody. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hello? There we go. Can't do it without you, God. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. First of all, I want to to offer my condolences to Sister Juanita and the family, all of you, on the passing of our brother, Brother Reuben. And I'm not going to keep you long, but I want to ease into the message. Brother Reuben was a character. Uh, and he and Juanita... They loved me. I, one day I went to my favorite restaurant to eat. I'm not going to call it because it's Juanita may remember, but I, I was in there and I walk in and I see them over there and we wave. Hey, how y'all doing? Good to see you. When I was about to finish my meal, the waitress came over and says, uh, your meal taken care of. Oh, it is. I look over, and he over there grinning at me, skinning and grinning. <laughs> Took care of my meal, and I politely told him any time that he'd like to take care of my lunch, <laughs> just let me know. But that was, that was them, and I appreciated it so much. And we came in today, and I, I learned something new. Because I get caught in it too, but I learned something new. And that is that everybody was going around calling Sharwin's husband Reuben Jr. But I learned today that he's Reuben the third. He's not Reuben Jr. Reuben Jr. is here. But I know how we go, we throw stuff around. He he the junior. He is so, but anyway, that's interesting to know that that he was really Reuben Jr. But Reuben, like I said, was a character. I remember when he had his surgery on his knee. The replacement, I went to see him at the VA. When I got to the VA, got into his room, and he's laying in the bed. And I said, how you doing, Brother Reuben? Oh, Pastor, hey, good to see you. Good to see you. But let me tell you something, Pastor. 
Oh, Lord, I cry like a baby, Pastor. <laughs> Is that, Pastor, you ain't had no pain until you had your knee replaced. Lord, Pastor, I cry, and I ain't shame, Pastor. I cry like a baby. And so he was just open and transparent. Didn't, wasn't no shame in his game. And so I tried to encourage him. We laughed about it, but he was just like, Pastor, you know, I'm going to be all right, but this pain is unbearable. But one of the things that knitted our hearts together more than anything else, and I thought about how much of it to reveal, but he came to see me one day, made an appointment, and he said, Pastor, there's something I want to share with you that I've been carrying around with me since coming back from Vietnam. He says, and I've been carrying this thing. He says, I need to talk it out with you. And so we had a conversation, and we spent time together talking through what, what he wanted to talk about, and, and we prayed together and left. And it wasn't until months later we were in a conversation, he, I, and somebody else, and he looks over and he goes, he says, you know something? Pastor freed me. I said, what do you mean I freed you? He said, since the day I had that conversation with you, God allowed me to sit down that burden. He says, and I don't carry it anymore because you helped me through it. And that moment, it was almost as if I, lived, I became a part of his, his makeup. We just, we just knit, we, our spirits just, just knitted together. And I looked at him and I go, man, I don't know what I said to you. I'm not that profound, but I think whatever it was, the fact that I was able to listen, to walk with him through that process, and I was so happy to be able to do that because I, I just know sometimes in life you just need somebody to hear you. You just need somebody to hear. And so I, I just want us to share those couple of thoughts because... Um, he was just a good guy, happy. Last time we saw him was at the church uh, fall fest, and he was out there holding court as usual. <laughs> um, but that was the last time that, that I saw him. Um, and I just want to say, Bonita, don't worry about it. Can you turn this one? In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8, Paul's writing. Paul says, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Departure is a certainty. The end is going to come. Every one of us has an appointed time. Amen. And Paul says here, I fought a good fight. Paul says, I was in the arena, yeah. and I did the best that I could. Brother Reuben was in the arena, the arena of life, not just the arena of the Air Force, but he was in the arena of life, and he did the best that he could. Many times, life seems more like a fight than anything else. Sometimes life is a struggle. Sometimes life is hard. We get knocked down and we need God to help us back up. We face financial crises. We face health concerns. We face 
relationship problems. But God allows us and helps us to go on. And in this moment, you as a family are facing grief and you need help from God to go on. So Paul says, I finished the race. Reuben can say, I finished my race. I have ran my course. I've lived my life and now it is done. It will happen to you. It will happen to me. And scripture des describes for us in many different places that life is a race and we run it with all of our might. But yet there is a finish line. There is a finish line. In 1 Corinthians 9, 20, 24, 25, he says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Order your life in a way that you will win. One of the amazing things to me is the Olympics. Four years or more of preparation for the Olympics. And you run the 100 yard dash and only one person wins. Life is kind of like that. You're in it. But what is it that you're striving to win? And that's the incredible thing about the, the analogy because the analogy of the runner breaks down because in life one wins, but you know all of us in God's eye have the potential to win. Right, right. We may be running together, but if, if all of us are right with God, then we all will get to go to heaven. We all can win. He says they do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. And people don't understand that, but see, back in the day when Paul was talking about when they ran the race, they would get a wreath. And those of you that followed the Olympics, you know that the wreath was really leaves. The original crown that they would win were leaves, and those leaves would what? They would fade, and they would crumble, and they would deteriorate. They wouldn't last. But the crown that we get from following Christ is a crown that will last forever. So James could say in James 1.12, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Yeah. I knew Reuben loved the Lord. I could see him right there. You know, every church, every folk got their own seats. You know, sometimes you go to a church and you look on the benches and you see who donated which role. I don't like that because folk get all, we own that. But even if you take the sign off the side of the seat, Folks own certain seats. You know, that's my seat. I know we're in a funeral, but I'll tell you a story. I looked up one day, and there was a commotion in the church. <laughs> and there were two ladies going at it. I didn't know what it was, but they calmed down, and I learned later that one of them tried to sit in the other one's seat. And that lady wasn't having it. No, not in my seat. But ain't no sign on this seat, but you know I always sit there. <laughs> Everyone's got a seat. But he says, you will live this life that will be a life forever with God. And so departure is a certainty, but reward is also a certainty. The crown of righteousness is in store. Heaven is awaiting all those who trust in the Lord as their Savior. There are those who have gone on ahead of Reuben, and there's those of us that will go on behind. Yeah. But you know, it's not just about dying, but it's about those who die in the Lord. Death is inevitable. But the question is, what state do you die in? Do you die as a born-again child of God, or do you die as someone who doesn't know the Lord? My Bible says the wages of sin is death, which is separation from God for all eternity. And if you die in the state of that death, you will never find salvation. Reuben gave his heart to the Lord and sought to serve him 
as a part of this local body. And he had family here. And he had those that were brought to the Lord because of his witness. So today we've come to celebrate his life. We've come to say, Reuben, we're going to see you one day. We've come to say, Reuben, you fought a good fight. You finished your course. And there is laid up for you a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give at his appearing. And so we know this poem well. And Reuben can say, don't grieve for me, for now I am free. I'm following the path God has laid, you see. I took his hand, and when I heard him call, I turned my back, and I left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work, to play. For tasks left undone must stay that way. I found that peace at the close of day. If my parting has left the void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. Oh, yes, these things I too will miss. But not burdened with times of sorrow, I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full. I savored much. Good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your hearts and peace to thee. God wanted me now. He set me free. And God has set him free. I want to say to you right now, if you have not been set free, you can be set free today. For life begins the moment you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Would you bow your heads with me? With heads bowed and eyes closed, if you've never yet said yes to Jesus, you can do it in this moment. Just simply talk to God in your heart and you say to him, Lord, I know that I am a sinner. And I know that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And so the best I know how, I am trusting him. I believe it, that he died for me. Save me and make me your child. God, I thank you today for the one that would say that prayer. And make this day a day of salvation. Lord, confirm to them that you have received them as your child. And Lord, we would be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer, here's what I want you to do. Come Sunday, find you a place of worship. Doesn't have to be First Baptist Church of College Hill, but find you a place where Jesus is lifted up, where his name is honored and glorified. And you do that so that you can grow in your faith. God bless you. At this time, we we won't be having a committal because uh, we'll be traveling in a little while up to uh, to the to Bushnell. But I would ask the family to follow me and others. We're going to have a repass here at the church, and we'll do that before we go to uh, the cemetery. And so we we will lead out, and we'd have the family follow, and then the general um, congregation. To veil my feet, two wings to veil my face, two wings to fly.
And if these two wings should fail me, I want you to meet me with another pair. Two wings to veil my feet. Two wings to veil my face. Oh, two wings to fly. Will you meet me? I want you to meet me in the middle of the air. And oh, if these two wings should fail me, I want you to meet me with another pair. And oh, two wings to fail my feet. Two wings, two wings to veil my face. Veil. And oh, two wings to fly. And the world can't do me no harm. Oh, two wings, two wings. to veil my feet. Give me two wings. To veil my face and oh, two wings to fly. And 